Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today we're just gonna hang out in my sketchbook for a little bit and paint some watercolor crystals. The sketchbook I'm using is a handmade sketchbook by my friend Autumn who has an Etsy shop where she makes amazing handmade sketchbooks out of repurposed books and it's amazing and you should definitely check her out. And the paints I'm going to be using is actually this custom Da Vinci palette that Denise from In Liquid Color put together. I've had it literally since it launched and haven't gotten to play with it much yet so I'm excited to sit down with some art supplies that are special to me from my friends and before we get started I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I've actually been using Skillshare a lot for focused learning. It's a really fantastic platform with thousands and thousands of classes on tons of different topics. During this month in October, I've been taking classes about inking and creative writing, but today specifically I want to share with you firstly this class by Erin Kate Archer about painting crystals and watercolor. She has this really awesome loose process that she uses, and I love how she puts together these crystals so quickly, which you'll discover I wish I had kind of followed her advice a little bit more when it came to my actual crystals. I took her class a long time ago and even submitted my own project. And as most of you know, I teach on Skillshare as well, and I have for a couple of years now, and it's pretty exciting. I recently updated my first watercolor portraits class, which I posted a while ago, and I was feeling like it needed some fresh content. So I recently recorded a whole new portrait painting and added it on to that class. I'm really happy with how that portrait turned out. If you're interested in some updated tips and a better look into my current process when it comes to drawing heads and also sculpting features in watercolors. If you haven't tried Skillshare before and you're interested in checking out their library of over 30,000 classes taught by professionals in their fields, you can check out the link in the description for two free months of premium membership. The stickers I'm going to be painting today are for fun, but they're also going to be featured in November's sticker sheet over on Patreon as well. I recently put up a poll and asked my patrons what theme they would like to see for November's sticker sheet, with watercolor crystals being one of the available options, and it was definitely the clear winner. So I was really excited to revisit this subject after Oh my goodness, maybe a couple of years since I'd last painted any crystals could have definitely been 2017. So I was very, very excited. I've had a Pinterest board of different stones and crystals and gems that I've been adding to over time. And I've been telling myself that I was going to get back to painting them for a long time and it just kind of never happened. So uh, thank you to my patrons for giving me the opportunity to do this. And I'm really excited to take these and scan them in and make some stickers. I'll probably add in a few extra looser ones to kind of fill out the sheet, but I'm going to be painting four of them for you here today. And I was pretty... I don't know, nervous and unsure of how to go about painting these right from the very beginning because crystals don't have eyeballs and noses and mouths and they're not people so I'm not exactly sure the best way to approach painting them and even though I did these four I feel a little bit more comfortable but I can definitely see that there's so much room for growth and there's so much more that I can learn and want to learn when it comes to painting crystals and feeling like I'm doing a really good job. You may also notice that I have no idea what any of these crystals are called. You're more than welcome to tell me in the comments if you know what they are just by seeing, you know, my sketches and painting, but I, I just named them after what colors they were in my sketchbook just so I could remember what reference photos to look at when I was working on these because each one is kind of a combination of a few different references so that I could get an understanding of the colors I wanted to use and kind of how they reflected in the light. So no, I don't know the names of these crystals, literally just put colors in for them so that I could keep track, but they were a lot of fun to paint for the most part. I was kind of whining about it while I was working on them because I wasn't really sure about the process. I wasn't really sure what I needed to do next at some point, and I approached especially this first one very, very timidly, and I was just working really, really slow and very cautious, which isn't really how I normally work, and I felt 
at just very out of my element trying to do this, and I did slowly start to loosen up towards the end, but I would definitely need pages and pages more crystals like these, more and more practice time, just lots more hours working on subject matters like these before I was feeling especially confident in creating ones that I was super proud of. So I don't dislike these for sure. I definitely think that I learned a lot in working on them, but I, I need I need more practice. For this first blue crystal, I focused a lot on just using a phthalo turquoise and an Indian throne blue, so just a couple of different blues of slightly different temperatures and varying the colors in between there. I think I may have even added a little bit of phthalo green to warm up some of those lighter facets so they would look as though they were shining in the light a little bit more. It's kind of funny when working on something like this, I could tell that what some of them needed were just a greater range of values, darker darks, and I needed to have done a better job at either preserving the whites or adding in white with white gouache or a gel pen or however I wanted to do that. I could tell that a lot of the work had to do with a distribution of values, and when it comes to painting something that I'm not as familiar with, I tend to not have as much patience for making it right. Even when I know that all a piece needs is just a little bit more time and a little bit of patience, I don't always want to uh, to take the time, but it's okay, especially in this particular instance because it's in my sketchbook and it's an experiment. I'm super grateful that my patrons have been really supportive in allowing the sticker sheets to just be an exploration of where I was at at the time. They're not always finished pieces, the stickers. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're ink sketches or watercolor swatches, and it's just fun to put together a sheet that has a bit of a theme to it. I think this purple one was probably the only one that I had a name for, and that's just because it was right there in the reference images I was looking at, so that one is Amethyst. I hope that those of you who know about crystals will forgive me because I, I don't know a lot of things. I was probably most excited about painting the white one down here just because it was going to give me the opportunity to use various shades of gray. So there were some that were a little bit more brown, some that were a little bit more blue, and having the crystal overall appear to be white was very exciting. Not exactly sure if I succeeded with that goal in the long term, but either way it was fun and exciting and if nothing else, I do want to try more of these. And a few of my artist friends, I was kind of whining about it on Instagram while I was working on these. A few people had said that I could always incorporate crystals into some of my portrait work that I do and, you know, have them growing out of people or just putting faces on the crystals. And I, I do want to do that. I think that that sounds like a lot of fun. And I think this was a good first step in kind of getting back into incorporating a few more things into my work, which as a side note is something that I really want to do. I've started to get really comfortable lately with just, you know, putting together a couple of different references or taking pictures of myself and just doing rather straightforward portraits, which I absolutely love. And they are basically my favorite thing to paint, but I do miss incorporating at least a few additional elements into my pieces. So I am hoping to get back to that and just allow myself to be a little bit more patient in some aspects of my work and just incorporate a few more things and tell a little bit more of a story while I paint. The red one up in the corner, I actually really liked that the lightest face that's facing towards us had this really sort of rainbow opalescent effect or pearlescent effect or whatever the correct term is for its shiny rainbowness. I really, really loved that. When it caught the light, it just had this rainbow sort of look to it. And the best way to make an effect like that actually look the way it's supposed to just comes to a proper distribution of values. And really, when you're looking for things to look realistic, scale and value is going to be, you know, your two best friends, making sure that spaces that are supposed to be very tiny are very tiny. That's one of the biggest ways that I would ruin like landscapes is I would start to paint leaves and they were just massive and they looked very cartoony, which is fun if that's what you're going for. I definitely felt the same sort of thing happening with these crystals. I knew that I needed to keep my fine details very fine, keep those lines thin and small and precise if I wanted these to have the effect I was going for. 
People paint watercolor crystals in so many different ways. Some people do really loose washes with ink lines, and some people are really good at like hyper-realistic crystals. I love them as a subject matter when it comes to painting because there are so many different things that you can do, so many different ways that you can interpret them. The class I talked about on Skillshare, Erin was using masking fluid to actually mask out the lines in between the individual facets, and when that masking fluid was peeled away after everything was dry, it created such a beautiful effect and allowed for so much looseness. And maybe I'll experiment more with that soon because I really did feel like my crystals, I, I spent way more time on them than what it was worth for the final result that I got. I wasn't as happy with them as I should have been for something that took me as long as these did. Um, but it was a good learning experience, and I hope at the very least that you guys are inspired to maybe give painting crystals a go. There are so many amazing references out there, and um, it was overall a fun experience. So if you're interested in the final sticker sheet, there are still a few slots open for sticker sheets in the US and plenty of international slots left over on Patreon. And also, if you would like to try Skillshare, you can check out the link down in the description for two months of free premium membership. All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me in my sketchbook today, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.